Hey guys, this is some serious stuff. We're going to get into some gematria that Jim Brown has um, showed me, you know. Okay, let's, you know, in Hebrew, every number, um, every letter is a number. And in Greek also, every uh, letter has a numerical value. So in a sense, a lot of people think the Bible is just one long stream of numbers and it's like a hidden code, like in that movie, Pi. Um, well, the thing is, it is a code and it does hide secrets. And here's some of the examples. Um, Joseph, if you add up the Hebrew numerical values, it's 156. That means scatter, the word scatter, also has a value of 156. He scattered Israel. It's just little connections like that, like, you know, the word kid in Hebrew adds up to mom and dad. Like, it's like a mathematical game. Spirits in prison equals 1,800. And here's where we get into the meaning of the numbers. The number nine means repentance. The number two means the house of God. Um, so 18 is a divisible of that. And the spirits in a prison are, are, are people in the house of God who are in repentance. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's how you interpret it. Jim Brown found all his own little things. He didn't read it anywhere. He found it himself. Um, pour out uh, 400, or uh, that has to do with God's judgment. The number four, like the four horsemen. Okay. Um, water is uh, nine, which is also repentance. Uh, here's a cool one. 2400 is the Holy Ghost. Three and eight, it's divisible by. Three is the Trinity, the Godhead. And part of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a part of that. And number eight stands for hearing. Isn't that incredible? Mathematically, it's a big code. The word Sheba is seven, um, but Shaba means to take an oath to God. So you know the number seven always means God, and six is man. Okay? Um, and, and five, I think, is Gentiles. But yeah, seven, you know, the book of Revelation has seven about 18 times in it. So anyway, four times the Lord says, I will punish you for your sins um, in Leviticus. Leviticus 26. Um, here, actually, let's go to, um, y'all got to watch Jim Brown if you want to get into that stuff. Seven is always holy and four is always the law. Noah sat in a boat for seven days and it rained uh, and then it rained for 40 days. So it's just these numbers keep showing up in pairs like that. Um, John 21, okay, this is actually kind of important. Um, here we go, it's actually back here. John 21, KJV, Jesus appears at the Sea of Galilee. Um, Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and 153. For all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Okay, why? I've been, this exact problem I've been struggling with ever since I got into the New Testament. I was like, I know there's numerical value to this. Jim Brown answered it. Thank you, Jim Brown. Wherever you are, this was the exact question I had. No one else, I randomly found you, and you randomly answered this. Okay, 1072 is, a, is part of the code here. All right, 153, there were seven disciples and 153 fish, okay? Um, Jesus did 153 miracles. The word in Hebrew for sons of God adds up to 153, and it's mentioned seven times in the Old Testament. Isn't that interesting? So 153 is mentioned seven times in the Old Testament, and then in the last chapter of John, the last of the four Gospels, the 153 fish are mentioned with the seven disciples. So what is 1072? Well, in Romans 8.28, when it talks about predestination, you can't change people. Jesus is going to bring them to him or he's not. I've come to that realization, okay? that The word joint heirs is used in that context. Like, we are joint heirs. We're all predestined to be with Christ. That word is sub, uh, subcleronimo or whatever. That's 100. That... That's 153, okay? Um, wait, it's either 153 or it's 1071. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, the word loaves, we are the bread of life, artus, means it adds up to 1071. 
axios adds up to 1071, and that's the word equitable. It's all about being equal. It all balances out is what these numbers are showing us. Literally balances out. Raise 1 to the third power, add it uh, to 5 to the third power, then add it to 3 to the third power. It's 153. Okay? Add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, etc. to 17, you get uh, 153. Or no, you get uh, 1071. Sorry. Sorry, it's just a big game, okay? And this I'll go into very briefly, but what he's talking about, biblical chemistry, he said it even scares him when he studies it, and it scares me too because it's just so perfect. Seven is the number of completeness, okay? And there's one Lord, one God, okay? We're out of balance right now. Atoms have, uh, okay, hey, let me start from here. Salt is sodium chloride. Only... We are the salt of the earth, is what the Bible says, okay? And only when we are we add this the seven electrons to chlorine does it become sodium chloride. So so chlorine alone is bad for you. Um, it will, but when you add the seven electrons or whatever, or the one extra electron, I can't, I don't know. I, I flunked chemistry. I took summer school for that one. Okay, so he's getting me into it. We're both no novices in chemistry, but we're both experts in theology. And so we just have to de delve in all realms to discover the grand picture. And guess what? Jesus, well, we have to be one, add that seven to the one, and then you get eight, which is, if you add up the name Jesus in Greek, it's 888. Eight has always been God, and nine, I think, is completion. Okay, or repentance, you know, like the end. Uh, anyway, this dude is on top of things. I, f I find the Groxton 2012, then I find San Gip. You know, he was all right. He showed me a lot of good KJV stuff, but then, dude, this dude takes the crown right now for 2015. After all I've studied with the Groxton, I mean, he's just take The Groxton opened me to this stuff, and now Jim Brown is going even... In a different realm. He mentions the New World Order. He believes it'll happen. But I don't know if he believes we'll be raptured, even though I do. He thinks we're all Christians might just have to die for their belief. Like, only be, be a great tribulation. But I believe in a rapture. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much mainly what we disagree with. But all this stuff, gematria and baptism is actually not about water. Baptismo, the root word in Greek, means to stain or die. And... Jesus said, can you be baptized the way I was baptized? After he rose from the dead, he wasn't talking about pouring water on his head. He said, can you die with the blood stains? That's what real baptism is. Or maybe I just want to believe that because I haven't been baptized. And, and this just confirms that I don't have to be to be saved. Okay, it's just all about the Textus Receptus. By the way, I'm still reading it in Greek. I got my own book instead of reading it online. The Texas Receptus. If there's 24 ways to say the word the in Greek, the KJV only uses the word the. And it's not the KJV translator's fault. I'm not blaming anyone. It's English's fault. English is barbaric. They have like a male the, a female the, a neutral the, which is what we use. You know, a plural the, a singular. Like there's so many ways and it's part of the context. And once you learn some Greek... It's really not that difficult to really understand some of these nuances, but you've really got to just look at every single word. I'm ranting, just like, just like Jim here. Anyway, the Grox, Jim Brown, Swedenberg, William Miller, all these great Christians. It's just been stepping stones, okay, until, until the end times, honestly. Okay, thanks.